guys and happy good friday i hope you're having a beautiful day so far i did try to take you to mount virgin our lady of mount virgin but we couldn't the doors were locked so we'll talk about that later right now we're going to make pane de pasqua which is um a beautiful easter bread and i'm going to tell you how to do it all right so in one bowl in one bowl you want four and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour two teaspoons of baking powder and mix that up mix that all up together and set that aside for now in another bowl you want four large eggs a cup of granulated sugar three quarters of a cup of olive oil and one lemon zest only okay i'm gonna beat that together until the sugar is dissolved okay Or at least well blended, you know what I mean. It's got to be very well blended, that sugar in there. You can do this with a mixer if you want. I just did it this way so you could see it better. It's a very easy dough, very easy recipe in fact. And what's really easy about this is no yeast. This is the no yeast kind. Uh, the one with the yeast, uh, it's delicious. It's like, um, kind of like, what do you call it, babka. It has that kind of flavor and texture or kala. But um, with the yeasted bread, you have to, um, there's two rising periods, both of an hour each. So that's uh, a lot of time you know and so to keep it easy we're gonna do the non-yeast version today all right that's pretty good that's pretty well mixed so what I'm gonna do is take my egg sugar lemon zest and oil mixture and put it into my KitchenAid uh, fitted with the, the dough hook here. Oh, I'm telling you, nothing smells like lemon zest. It is an incredible thing. to add our flour and baking powder mixture, okay?
until it starts to come together. Okay, it's looking pretty good. It's starting to pull away. It's starting to pull away from the sides. Let's get it all in there nice. Into a nice ball. Start getting it into a nice ball. Looks pretty damn good. Okay, that looks good to me. So, what we're gonna do is take it out and put it on a piece of plastic for now. And then I'm going to clean up, you know, move the stand mixer, do all that good stuff, and I will show you what we need to do next. If you don't have a KitchenAid and, and you do like to cook and or bake, they are so amazing. They're so worth the investment, I'm telling you. Really great. I've had mine for years and I love it. So let's take the hook off and get the dough together here. This is going to be a softish dough, nice sticky soft dough. Weighs a ton, also. Okay. Put it right on a piece of plastic here. Get this good excess out. Um, if you've always wanted KitchenAid. Maybe uh, that's a fun thing that you can buy with your stimulus check, All right? All right, so we're going to let this sit for just a minute while I clean up, okay? And I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, you're going to flour your board, flour your work surface, turn out your dough. It's kneaded a little bit, just a little bit, just to mix it nice. And uh, you're going to pull off three little balls of dough at a time and roll them into ropes about 14 inches. Let's put this up there. I don't need that much yet. Into ropes about 14 inches long, okay? So we'll do that. This, of course, is the most time-consuming part, <laughs> but it's also part of the fun, you know? Especially on lockdown, why not do the hard stuff, right? The harder stuff, the more labor-intensive stuff. Okay, next. You're going to take three, the three ropes, you're going to press them together at one end, okay? And you're going to start braiding. Just like a hair braid, okay? So 
they, if they break or come apart or get too thin in places, just press them together because once it's all um, together and said and done here, they, they'll look just as beautiful. you're going to do is press the other end together make a little circle and press it together at the end okay just like that looks like uh, the crown of thorns right all right after you make your little wreath your little Brown, whatever you want to call it, you will take your raw dyed egg and put it right where you sealed the bread. And then I'm going to make little holders, like something to hold your little egg in place, going one way and then the other, like a little cross. After we get a couple on here, we will um, egg wash them and uh, put the little Put the little candy sprinkles on, okay? So let's do another one. And you can actually make them any size you want, you know. You can make the little wreaths any size. Little, you can make them very small. You can make them very large and so once again I was uh, record shopping on eBay getting some really fun and unique pieces and uh, Thank God for eBay when we don't have our record stores, you know, it's such a drag. That's one of the saddest parts about the whole thing is not having our record stores, right? And hopefully your record store, your local record store, um, does sell on eBay too. Otherwise, they're, uh, they're going to... It's going to be very difficult for them to stay open. I think most record stores sell on eBay. I know Joe does. Uh, Craig the Record King, uh, it's a huge part of his business. So. Alrighty, next braid. It is, it's quite a bit of work, but it's, it's worth it. You know, it's once a year, just like with some of the Christmas baking. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, it probably would have been easier <laughs> for me to do the uh, Easter meat pie than this. But that's okay. Remember, three pieces of dough.
Did I tell you to preheat your oven to 400? I probably didn't. Yeah, preheat your oven to 400 while you're doing this. Make your little wreath. Okay, so I'm going to keep going and then I'll show you what to do after we're all done. Okay guys, now what we're going to do is take a beaten egg mixed with a little bit of milk and that's going to be our, our egg wash for the little wreaths, the little crowns. And then you're going to want these little colorful sprinkles. They're like little non pareils That's what you want. That's the traditional uh, Easter bread decoration, okay? Oh, sure, they seal it with plastic so that when you try to get it off, you send non pareils all over the kitchen floor. All right, I think we're okay. Don't want to speak too soon, but yeah, okay, <laughs> that works. All right then, I did wind up getting six uh, wreaths out of the recipe rather than five, so we have one white egg here for for Easter. It's pretty cool. All right, now brush your brush your wreaths really nicely with your wash trying as best you can to avoid the egg itself don't get egg wash on the top of the egg because it'll give it it'll look funky but uh we'll try to go down the little try to just go on the cross here little cross okay this should be fine and then you sprinkle your little non pareils like this isn't that beautiful though really pretty right my grandmother used to make this and she she braid she made one big well she also made the yeasted one she was making the yeasted one but she would make one big one um with all big braided down and um with three eggs baked into it strategically placed eggs really really beautiful Yeah, the non pareils make a mess, but they do look so beautiful. So this is our first batch of three. And we will put them in the 400 degree oven for about 15 minutes. I want to say 15 to 18 maybe. Just keep an eye on them. You just want them to get brown. I actually was going to make the yeasted version, but uh, the food store had no yeast, and I, I, I got a little upset. <laughs> I said, it's Easter and you have no yeast? She was like, oh, we can only get what we can get. I was like, jeez, man. So, instead we are doing the non-yeast version, which is fine, because we don't have to wait for it to rise and all that, so... It's kind of kind of a good thing, right? All right, so 400 degree oven 
for 15 to 18 minutes. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay, here's our first batch. And as you can see, as you go along and get your groove, the second batch comes out a lot neater, a lot neater and prettier. But these are fine and they'll taste the same. <laughs> and uh, so if your first attempt comes out looking like these, you did really good. You did fine. Because it, like I said, it does take a little while to get your groove. And uh, it really is a beautiful, beautiful Easter dessert. A little sweet breakfast cake it could be. You can have these for breakfast or with coffee after, you know, after dinner. Really a beautiful thing. Very beautiful. Traditional things that bring us back. This is the kind of stuff we need right now since uh, everything is so weird and unsettled in the world. I don't know. Yeah, this one, these first ones aren't going to stick very well unless I give them a lot of egg. There we go. That should be about it, guys. So when the first batch comes out of the oven, we'll put the second batch in and we'll take a look at what we have done. I think I have a million non perils all over the kitchen. So these are the tiniest candies that you can get. So <laughs> they make such a mess, such a mess. All right, guys, I'll be back with you when they're finished. And here are our finished Pane de Pasqua. They smell really good. I think the lemon zest really adds that amazing uh, level of deliciousness. I have one right here that we're going to try, okay? Yep, very, very good. Very, very good. Some people put a sugar glaze on top on these and then sprinkle the non -pareils. If you want it a little bit sweeter, that's a way to go. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you try it, and we'll talk to you very, very soon. Love you all. Bona Pasqua.